started. Um, let's start with just some announcements. Number one, <laughs> the one that will keep you scrambling. The lab, um, the lab guy, you have this lab guy because we're going to be doing things in chemistry and geology and whatnot. I don't know what to do with those labs. Physics labs, I know. And they didn't have, the last two, they have one very similar to ones I've written. They don't have one similar to this, and I really think this is a, a good lab, a useful lab. So this one here is not out of the lab, but here are the reports, or the instructions. So everybody needs to, you know, take one, pass them along. Take one on the plane, that's what I'm going to do. Much like we do with bottles of uh, soda pop. So number two, graded assignments. A number of assignments have been graded, and I think only one has been returned. After I get you started, I will work on trying to record some more and getting more returned to you because it's important that students know how you're doing, know if you're doing things right. Um, with the lab reports, um, some of the lab reports for last week have been returned. Some of them we're going to sit down and spend a little more time looking at, and so they're not returned yet. So that's kind of like a hit and miss if you have it or not. But we will try, Alex and me, we will try to get those to you soon because it's a lot more useful to have the immediate feedback, you know, just like with homework. Also, did you guys know, I know a few people who came to my office after class yesterday know, there was actually a picture to go along with problem 363. What? Wait, what, what was problem 363? The one I did in class where I said their answer was wrong. There was a picture, and the picture had a pulley in it. Oh. And for their picture, their answer in the book was right. Um. And so I will work it both ways, with the picture in the book and with what you would interpret without the picture. And either way will be acceptable. I did see a pulley in the actual textbook. What was it? Yeah, it was over on the right side of the page. You had a girl pulling upward on a string, going down around the pulley, then tied to the ceiling. And that changes things. Yes, it changes things. <laughs> because you have the string pulling up on both sides, so you have two times the force she's applying pulling up, which means that the force downward is twice as big, i.e., 10 kilograms, as they said in the book. Um, the work still turns out to be the same, but or the change of potential energy. Okay, so those two out of the way. Let's get started now. Everybody should have the lab instructions with the lab. So what we're going to be doing is looking at, at collisions. And while it would be fun if we did things like I said, okay, Brittany, you get up, you and me, we're running, we're hitting each other, we're going to measure what happens. That would be fun, right? All right, she's ready. I'm ready. Got to get in the machine. Don't forget that my tight ends are a little better than yours. I'm so much into flag football, I can't put my hand on the ground, right? Flag football, that's against the rules. Why do they put their hand on the ground? Well, you want to get your body lower because in the collision, the person who's lower can lift the other person, taking their feet off the ground and giving them no leverage. Okay, so to this, we're going to be looking at collisions, but we're going to be looking at collisions on our tracks. So we have two kinds of carts. One kind of cart has that, one kind doesn't. And they have names. It's a dynamics cart if it has the plunger. It's a collision cart if it doesn't. I don't know that anybody cares. What's important about these? If you take the one that has the plunger, that's made so you can put them together, push down the plunger, and it pushes them apart, and you measure conservation momentum in a kind of hokey fashion. There's no magnets here. And so they'll stick together. And so that's how we're going to make collisions where the two objects stick together. Do you remember what we call the collision where the two objects stuck together? Inelastic. So we'll make inelastic collisions by having them that way. If I take this one here, the dynamics cart, um, yeah, as far as carts, I have two carts up here, so <laughs> you may be missing one. Two stations may be missing one. Yes, I have one of your detectors as well. If you turn this one around, it doesn't matter what you do with the one that's the same on both sides, but if you turn the one that has the plunger around, so the plunger's on the back side, then the magnets will repel. And so that's how we're gonna make collisions where they don't stick together. What do we call them where they don't stick together? Elastic. Elastic. Okay. elastic. So we're going to make elastic and inelastic collisions. And then we're going to measure the momentum 
and, kinet and kinetic energy during the experiment. So let's go really quickly through just a little bit of theory. Right? We did a lot of theory stuffy in class. So here, just pointing to the bare bones, what do we call this equation right here? Any equation, me. She is on fire. Well, what do we call that equation? Uh, force. Friction. Net. 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 So Newton's second law says the net force is equal to mass times acceleration, or actually being more correct, the net force is the change in momentum over the change in time. So we saw in class that if we solve that for change in momentum, change in momentum is the net force multiplied by the change in time. Now you had a homework problem that said that Bronco jumps out of a helicopter and notices that his momentum is changing. Is that violating conservation of momentum? No. No. Good answer. Why not? Because remember, on the homework, if you say no, that's one point, then you have nine points for your explanation. Because um, the conservation of momentum says that. I forget what it says. Um, well, the system change was like, there was an outside force, which was like, you know, gravity. So I put. Okay, so if I, if I put, if okay, I put, he's mocking me. He's mocking me. No, no, no. If I put no, as, and that's one point. And my yeah. explanation was because gravity is because <laughs> gravity. <laughs> well, I've seen people on Facebook use that kind of because uh, Trump. Um, oh no. Sorry. He is the president. <laughs> yes. And, and as I was telling Alex, because he said I. Apparently, uh, supported my candidate before the election last semester. I'm not supposed to. That's illegal. Um, so hopefully, I didn't really. He just. I just kind of figured from what you were saying. I think. But for story, we're sticking with it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what we want from that. So yeah, we need to have an explanation of why, and it has to do with gravity, because the net external force is not zero, and momentum should only be conserved if the net external force is zero. So there was no expectation of conservation of momentum. Um, you can't violate something that there's no expectation of. You know, I, they, I have no curfew, but yet I violated curfew. Explain how this works, right? It's the same idea. There's no expectation of conservation of momentum. You can't violate it if it doesn't exist. So in our experiment, we're using these tracks. These tracks are called, very specifically, low friction tracks. Low friction, what does that mean in terms of the external forces? There's not a lot of them. Not a lot, but, but it exists. So you're going to have to have some of your questions you'll answer with regard to that. And when we look at conservation of momentum, we're going to have to keep in mind momentum shouldn't be perfectly conserved because there's a little friction. So we should expect just a little bit of loss in momentum. So we're going to look at the the slope of our total momentum line. And if the slope and total momentum line is like this and like this, so they're just pointing to each other before and after collision, I would say, yeah, that's conserved within the fact that we have friction here. Likewise for kinetic energy, if we look at the slope of the kinetic energy line, they're pointing at each other, we say, yeah, that's conserved. Whereas if it's like this, not conserved. Everybody understand the difference? It's not going to stay constant because there is a little bit of friction. And that little bit of friction is removing both kinetic energy and potential energy. Now, in our collisions, we talked about two types, elastic and inelastic collisions. So in an elastic collision, beside, well, in all of our collisions, the net external force is the force of friction, which is very small, so momentum should approximately be conserved. In an elastic collision, should kinetic energy be conserved? Not always. Energy is always conserved, but not kinetic energy. 
I'm, I'm asking about kinetic energy, not energy. Unless it switches back over to potential energy. Okay. If it switches to potential energy or, more likely, into something like heat energy, then we'd have kinetic energy conserved. The elastic collision, our elastic collisions, they're not even going to touch. If they touch each other, you got to just redo it. Right? So they shouldn't even touch. What's happening is they get close and the magnets repel them. And you will store energy momentarily in the magnets. We call it magnetic potential energy. And then it gives it all back. And so we should have the same kinetic energy afterward as we started with. In theory, we're going to check and see. If they stick together, we have two things come and stick together. That causes some deformation, some changing in the shape of things. What we have on here is Velcro, or if you want to be technical and generic, it's a a hook and loop system, right, because Velcro's no, trade name, a hook and loop system, such as you find in thistles, that is making it grab together. And those things are going to flex against each other, and that's going to absorb energy as they flex. And so we expect to lose some kinetic energy because of the absorbing of energy done by the Velcro. Hey, babies. This is my wife, yo. <laughs> Surprise me. <laughs> so I, I knew she was coming yesterday, <laughs> but I forgot today. Okay, so she gets to listen to me talk. I bet that's going to be a thrill of her life. Okay, so getting to the experiment. Notice we set up a track here. The TA and I were in a rush, and we didn't do the next step, step two. After setting it up, what should I do next? Check to see if it's level. Check to see if it's level. Excellent, Haley. Um, so we want to check to see if it le it's level, because if it's not level, then there's going to be an external force. Right? Gravity is going to be either, well, it's going to be pulling it downhill, whichever way is downhill. So we want to make sure it's as level as possible so gravity isn't making an external force to mess with our data. So level it just like you did last week, using the little feet here. Make sure it's level both this way and that way. And then you're going to take a single cart. Not both carts, but a single cart. And that single cart, you're going to start at one side of the track. And you're just going to have it go across the track while you're taking data. And when you do that, it's going to show data. So let me go to, yeah, excellent. I did not open the experiment. Okay, honey, put the camera down. Don't, don't get excited there. She's gonna, it's gonna be the death of me, I'm telling you. Um, so you open this up. It's hard to stay concentrating with her back there, don't you agree? <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> I don't think I have this right now where I can access it there, but I will fix it in a jiffy. Look at that. Oh, crud. Okay. I have to change over because of computer issues. Google Drive magically uninstalled itself last night. That that was special for me. Okay, so here's an example of what data looks like. Now, we're going to take data with it going all the way across. So I'm actually going to do that experiment right now. So actually, let me show you this. This is later in the instructions. See over here where it has the calculator icon? If you click there, it shows you all the equations. Don't mess with equations 3 through 9, that, or 3 through 8. That will mess everything up. You don't do whatever you want with 9. One and two are telling me the masses of each cart. So here I just change it so both carts have the same mass of a half a kilogram. These carts, as we saw last week, are normally half a kilogram in mass. So I said so both carts have the same mass. And now I'm going to use only one cart. Um, honey, you want to help me out? Sure. Okay. When those things start clicking, just give that thing a shove. No, the cart. Give it a shove that's hard enough so it'll make it here, but not so hard that it comes super fast. Got it? Okay. 
<laughs> that was a little fast. Okay. It's okay. Well, I just told her, so it's like that. Like okay. that. Catch it, catch it. Nice catch. <laughs> yeah, got to make sure this stays on here and is square. You need to make sure these things have this thing vertical so it can see the cards as it goes across. If it's like me, it might see the card right now, but it'll lose it about here. That's really the reason we're doing this going all the way across, to make sure we see it all the way. And make sure you have the little switch on top so it's the card. Okay. You ready, honey? Okay. This time, this time it's for keeps. So when you hear it clicking. Good one, good one. <laughs> See that depth stopping I did? Just boom. Okay, so now let's look at what I just made. Okay, see they're, they're way off scale, right? What do we do when it's way off scale? I'm going to use the auto scale, this button up here. Boom. Now, we have all of this crud here from after I stopped it until I got back and stopped the data. I don't care about that. That's junk. So I'm just going to change my scale, get rid of that junk. What's going on here? That's before she pushed it. I don't care about before she pushed it either. So I'm going to adjust it back. Okay, got rid of the junk. And now let's look at the data. What we have on this, oops, wrong thing, is three lines on top, three lines on bottom. The top lines are showing the momenta. We have there in green the momentum of cart one. You see it says momentum one there in the little uh -huh. legend. And in magenta, we have momentum of cart two. And in blue, we have the sum of those two. Now, the key here is, was our line continuous throughout the data? The answer is yes, except for there were some little jig-jag things. Honestly, I don't know what caused those, but I didn't have the data fall off. Let me readjust this poorly. Poorly so that it's going to lose it as it's going down the track. So, honey, let us repeat. Catch it. This is on. Right, that's not on, that also causes a problem. Okay, so now let's do this again, but with one of them intentionally set off. Ready? Very nice job, honey. You guys liking this class? Say yes. <laughs> okay, let's not say that. That's just bad. That's bad for my self-esteem. Okay, so if we look at this, what's going on with the the uh, well the purple, the magenta cart two? What's going on with that one? It pretty much didn't see it at all until just when I caught it. That's because it's out of alignment. That's why you got to make sure these things are aligned correctly. So if it loses it somewhere, I mean, this was really badly aligned. If it was just a little bit off, it might have seen it for a meter and then lost it. So you just have to be careful with that. So that's what the first one was for. But then you have some questions about it. You have questions. And now, of course, I will change back and hope that all is still good. Last time I did this, it stopped my recording, actually. I think this will work and the recording might have stopped. You leaving me now, baby? I have to we haven't even started the lab yet. You don't get to see them work. I know. I would love it. I love to go. Okay, baby. We're going to talk. Um, you can leave your camera with one of them. They can take pictures. Alex could take pictures. Well, any of you have eyes, I can take pictures for sure. I think I have what I need. This is going to be for Mid-America. They're going to look at what you guys are doing here. So. I'll well, what they're doing is sitting and being bored. Huh? I know. I know. <laughs> This is the, this classroom, so okay. we'll email you guys. Good yeah, they'll, they'll email you pictures of me yes, going. Do. You'll see why my I'm hair is always standing up by the end of the day. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Okay, in your web, everybody. All right. So, so we have some questions about that. So you see the first question here, looking at the lines that you made for part one, which was uh, the, the green line. Right? Mm -hmm. Um. 
was momentum conserved as your single cart went down the track? And so you're going to answer yay or nay. And then was kinetic energy conserved, yay or nay? And then give your reason both from theory, why kinetic energy and momentum were or were not conserved, and from the graph, how you could determine from the graph if they were conserved. So while the purpose of this is to make sure we see the cart all the way down, we're also using it to make sure we understand what theory says about conservation of energy, kinetic energy, excuse me, and conservation of momentum. Then we have structures about the mass here. I'm going to skip over that. We have six dis defined experiments shown right here, enabled, numbered one through six. We're going to start with inelastic collisions. That's the ones where they stick together. And you're going to have to do all six of these, but you're going to choose one and make it uniquely your own. So we have, oh, Valerie and Haley working together. And Valerie might say, I really want to do experiment five for the one I'm making my own. And Haley says, well, I want to do two. You have to choose different numbers. You can't both say, oh, yeah, I'm going to do five, two, three. And you choose the one you're going to do. And before you do the experiments, you are going to, on this page here, whoops, this page here, graph what you think the three momentum lines will look like before and after the collision and what you think the three kinetic energy lines will look like before and after the collision. So you're drawing graphs of what you think it's going to look like. These don't have to be correct, but they have to have thought, right? You can't just put like, oh, mm, mm, I'm good. You have to have thought, and you have to explain your thoughts here in this box. After you've done that, and a key here is do it before you've done the experiment, because then you will be able to check to see if you understood before you started. If you understood, then it's reinforced. If you didn't understand, then you know, ooh, I need to rethink that. I missed something. So after each of you has done your predictions, then you're going to quickly do all six of them. So I am going to do one incorrectly. How am I going to do it incorrectly? I'm going to put the cards on here, and I'm going to leave the computer so it says both cards are half a kilogram. But I'm going to put a one ki <laughs> half kilogram extra in. So this one's actually one kilogram. Right. So my lines will be incorrect, but you'll see how the collisions look. So the key here is I'm not doing one of your trials, so you can't just say, oh, it looks like that. But you'll see how the data looks. So with it set up, I need to choose which trial I want to do. So I have it set up for four through six. We're going to do one through three. So which one do you want me to do? Three. three. Okay, so three says equal mass, cart one catching up to cart two. Now to do this, I need Alex to come help me out. So, and this might take a few trials. What you have to do is I'm going to have this heavier one catch up with the lighter one. And so I'm going to have to make the lighter one go then make the heavier one go faster. And there we had, actually, turn this one around because this was supposed to be inelastic and that was elastic. So now he's seen it once. You're probably going to have to do this a few times before you get reasonable data just because of speed variations. So you ready to give her a shot? OK. So that's good enough. About what time did the collision occur? Let me rescale all of the data. About what time did the collision occur? I told you. Alex, what time did the collision occur? Uh, at around 3.4 to 3.5 seconds. This is where the collision occurred here. Oh, right here. Identifying where the collision occurred is the first thing. I've had people. Even after showing this and explain, they go through and they do their whole experiment analyzing when they pushed it. Should momentum or kinetic no. energy be conserved when you pushed it? No. no. No, it shouldn't. And so they're getting all kinds of crazy answers because they didn't identify the right place. So that's the first thing. You need to identify the right place. Then you need to scale. So this really has to be done manually. So I'm just going to move my timeline over. So I have only about three or four data points before the collision. 
and then stretch it out. So I have about three or four data points after. Clearly, I need to change my vertical scale to fill the space. And so now we can look at this, and now we can answer questions. So the blue line is the total momentum. Did this stay on a roughly straight line? No, it jumped up at the collision. So I'd say momentum wasn't conserved. Why not? Because the graph showed it. In reality, why was momentum not conserved? Because I, I put the mass incorrectly. That's right. If I put the mass correctly, it, it should have been. And then likewise, we looked at the kinetic energy. This was going like this. And then it jumped up to higher kinetic energy. It didn't jump up a lot. But those lines don't point at each other. They point like this. And so I'd say, Ugh, kinetic energy wasn't conserved either. Now, if I set, okay, I'm a sucker. This is how we set the masses. If I set the mass correctly, where, where are you that up? Calculator. the calculator. I have to readjust. Ah, now is momentum conserved? Pretty much. And kinetic energy? Nope. So you see how we make those adjustments. Now, you have to print out your graphs, right? You have to print out the one for you. Your partner has to print out the one for them. So you don't have both yours and your partners. You just have yours. And so I'm going to take this. This was mine. Take a snapshot. Boom. There it is. So now I have, this is the one Alex and I did before. It was beautiful. This is the one we just did. It's also beautiful because... We're excellent data takers. We're some of the best in the world. We're very good, very good data takers. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's how we're doing the experiments. So you're going to do the six. It doesn't take a lot of time to do them, but if you don't know what you're doing, it does take a lot of time. So that's why I'm spending all this time explaining. After you've done the first six, these were all experiments where they were sticking together. And keep in mind, this has the 0.5 kilogram mass in one cart. Make sure that you use that calculator to put it in the computer and not just put it in the cart and forget about putting it in the computer. Otherwise, you get the messed up data like Alex and I just illustrated for you. So after you've done it, was your prediction about the trial you selected, so that's individualized to each student, correct? If not, what was different and why? So if you're correct, you just say yes. That's all you have to put there. If you were incorrect, you have to say no, and you have to give what you thought incorrectly, what was incorrect about your thinking, to show that you actually now understand it. Okay, then based on what you wrote in your data table, what did you write in your data table? You For each one, you put either C or NC. C for conserved. NC for not conserved. Conserved, as we talked about, the lines point to each other. Not conserved, the lines didn't point to each other. So here, you're going to say, was the momentum column, was it filled with Cs, filled with NCs, or some of each? For the kinetic energy column, that's this one here, was it filled with C's, filled with NC's, or mixed? So that's what you're answering for those two. And then we start over again. We start over again, but now we're going to flip this cart around. You already did. Because he is a thinker. He's a step ahead of me. So you're flipping that card, cart around. So now you're going to have elastic collisions, ones where they don't stick together. If you push it hard enough that they touch, go ahead and show them. Okay, there they didn't touch. That's perfectly legit. There, I'll do it. If they touch, <laughs> yeah. If you even hear them touch, just do it again. Because if they touch, like he did there, if they touch, then you know that there was some energy that was dissipated. And we don't want that. So you're going to, once again, choose the same experiment but now it's elastic instead of being elastic. Draw what the graphs will look like. Say if you expect momentum to be conserved, you expect kinetic energy to be conserved and why. 
And then you do all six, once again, filling in the chart, printing out the one that you chose, answering the same three questions. And finally, in this laboratory activity, I learned and summarize what you learned here. What should you learn? What's our goal for today? Okay, where's something I can throw at that young lady? <laughs> She's getting the shields up. It's not to get X number of credit hours. <laughs> no, that is not your goal. So, yeah, your goal is to understand why and when energy and momentum are conserved. So when you when you write here, you said to get credit. Oh, that was that was Casey. <laughs> I just assumed the words were breaking. My bad. Okay. So, so your what you learned should reference that. Did you learn what you were supposed to learn? Did you learn something completely different? Okay. Hey, we learned to flip her hair. That was not one of our goals. Okay, it should be groups of two, but Eric is not here, so we can have one group of three. Any questions before we get started? Um, I have a question on this. That's enough. So we pick one from here, and then we write down what we what we think it's going to be, and then here we write down what it is. No, no. One is one is momentum. Top is momentum, and then the bottom is kinetic energy. Okay. Well, Just like on this, you had momentum in the top one. Kinetic energy. Oh, so then this one, are we gonna put? That's for one. The first one is for when they stick together. The second one is for when they don't stick together. Are we drawing the actual or our predictions? You're drawing your predictions. Oh. Okay. Okay, tip, or not to the campus. Oh, same thing? Okay. Any other questions? All right, have fun. Ready? <laughs>